I would highly recommend that you do, as they contain important information, that is fundamental to the foundation, that we build on today. You are welcome to link to them now, but I have also provided links to them in the description below, should you wish to watch them at a later time. In today's video, we will focus on the time period, preceding the celestial events, as described in our previous video. In Matthew 24 verse 8, Yeshua calls this period of time, the beginning of sorrows. When we consider the Revelation 12 alignment, we know that this sign represents a celestial gestation period, from conception to birth, that matches the length of a normal human pregnancy, and that this process starts on November 20, 2016, and ends in the final alignment, as described in Revelation 12, on September 23, 2017. November 20 matches the heavenly conception of Jupiter in the womb of Virgo, while September 23, 2017, signals the completion of the alignment, which occurs two weeks after Jupiter is born, from the Virgo constellation. In the previous two videos, we uncovered which prophecy and vision, Daniel was told would be sealed up, and how God uses patterns in his word to reveal new information to us, that was hidden in the text, right from the time that the very first prophecy was given. In the second video, we specifically looked at how our solar system, forms part of the prophecies given in God's word, and what events are likely to occur in the heavens, in September of 2017. We have also shown how these events would most likely lead into the destruction that is prophesied in the book of Revelation. We discovered how God marked the fulfillment of the spring season of feast days, by a very unusual celestial event, in the form of a three-hour solar eclipse, that occurred within 18 hours of a lunar eclipse. The three-hour solar eclipse during Yeshua's crucifixion, specifically marked the completion of the first feast day, of the spring feasts. This then, provides us with a specific pattern, that we can apply, when we study the fall feasts. Having obtained this understanding, how does the Revelation 12 sign then, fit into the picture with regards to the fall feasts? We know that this celestial alignment is called a great wonder, and that it contains elements that are associated with the symbolism, found in the prophecy and vision that Daniel was told would be sealed up, until the time of the end. We also know that this is the only celestial marker that is described in so much detail in all of God's word. If the pattern, that we recognized during the spring feasts is reliable, we will expect this marker to signal the completion of a specific feast day in the fall season. So let us see then, how this great wonder applies to the fall feasts and the dates on which they occur in 2017. The fall feasts start off with the Feast of Trumpets, also known as Yom Teruah, or Rosh Hashanah, this is what God reveals about this feast in Leviticus 23. The Feast of Trumpets, Leviticus 23 verse 24. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. Israel received an instruction from God in Exodus 12 verse 2, on how to determine the first day of a month, which is then also applied to the Feast of Trumpets, as it marks the start of the Jewish New Year, of years. This requires the observation of the first sliver of the moon, that becomes visible, after the new moon. To ensure that this process was performed correctly, the Sanhedrin required the testimony of two witnesses, in order to declare the start of the new year. This is then based on the observation of the first sliver of the moon, that is physically observed in the heavens. Rosh Hashanah is then celebrated over two days as the nation did not know, ahead of time, on which of the two possible days, after the new moon, the first sliver of the moon would be observed. The Sanhedrin would only declare the start of the new year, once they have validated the testimony of the two witnesses, who testified before the Sanhedrin. Rosh Hashanah is then also known, as the day for which nobody knows the day or the hour, as it could fall on one of two possible days. 
This feast is also associated with trumpet sounds. For the entire month, prior to this feast, trumpets are sounded daily to call Israel to repentance and introspection. This process is then concluded, on the Feast of Trumpets, once the Sanhedrin declared the date, on which the first day of the first month, of the new year, falls. The trumpet that is sounded to mark the completion of this feast, is known as, the last drum. These aspects are quite important to take note of, as they are referenced in various passages in God's word, that tell us more about what to expect, when this feast is fulfilled. We will delve deeper into these in an upcoming video that will focus just on this feast. The period of time during which the Feast of Trumpets is then celebrated in 2017, is from sunset on September 21st to sunset on September 23rd. The sign of Revelation 12, reaches its final alignment as described in Revelation 12, at sunset on September 23rd. This is then no coincidence, when we understand how God uses patterns to convey information to us. If we then compare the Revelation 12 celestial alignment on September 23rd to the solar eclipse that occurred during Jesus' crucifixion, we can immediately see that we have a matching pattern. The very unusual three-hour solar eclipse marked the completion of Passover, or the first feast day of the spring season, while the very unusual Revelation 12 sign, marks the completion of the Feast of Trumpets, or the first feast of the fall season. Based on this pattern that repeats, and the fact that we are dealing with very unusual celestial markers, in both cases, we know that these aspects validate the information provided in God's word, with regards to the way in which he marks his feast days. I believe we can therefore have 100% certainty, that what God's word is telling us about this date, and this feast that will be fulfilled, will be proven accurate, reliable and trustworthy, and will definitely occur in September of 2017. So let us consider, in more detail, the time period leading up to this point, and what I believe God's word is telling us, about this time. In Matthew 24, and in Luke 21, Yeshua's disciples asked him about the time of the end, and the signs that will accompany this period of time. This was their question, as recorded in Matthew 24. Matthew 24 verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Yeshua started his response with the following passage. Matthew 24 verse 4 to 8. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. This information is repeated in Luke 21, and Mark 13, but the passage in Luke provides some additional detail, and this is what we read in Luke. Luke 21, verse 8 to 11. And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near, go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. If you are familiar with the studies on the four Gospels, by Dr. Chuck Missler, you will know that each Gospel was inspired by God, to represent Yeshua from a very specific viewpoint. If you have not listened to, or seen these studies, it is highly recommended. Matthew represents Yeshua as Israel's Messiah, while Luke represents Yeshua from a Gentile perspective. This is very important to understand, given the slight differences that are seen, 
when comparing the two passages about the time leading up to the end. We see that the beginning of sorrows is specifically mentioned from Matthew's viewpoint, while this period has no name from a Gentile's perspective, in the book of Luke. When we understand this, we know that this period of time, known as the beginning of sorrows, will specifically apply to Israel. We also see that there are no heavenly signs mentioned in Matthew's account, as part of the preceding events that will lead into the time of the end, while fearful sights and great heavenly signs, form part of Luke's account. I believe the reason for this difference, is found in another pattern that repeats when we consider the situation of Israel and the Gentiles before the onset of each series of feast days. Before the spring season of feasts, the actions of the Gentiles, showed that they knew when Israel's Messiah would be born. This was based on the celestial signal, that was recognized by the wise men from the east, when Israel's Messiah was born. They knew that this star, signaled the birth of Israel's Messiah, as explained in Matthew, 2. Knowing that this sign was prophesied a few centuries earlier, they sent a delegation of three wise men, to present gifts to Israel's Messiah, at the time of his birth. These were most likely descendants of the Magi in Babylon, that worked under Daniel, who received information from Daniel about the specific celestial signal, during Israel's exile in Babylon. The majority of Israel, did not recognize the fulfillment of prophecies, given in the law and the prophets that were speaking about their Messiah and neither did they recognize any of the heavenly signs that were associated with these events. We see this exact same pattern repeating for the second set of feast days and the same situation exists now, before the start of the fall feasts. The Gentile nations have in both cases received understanding of God's appointed times that are about to occur, and understand how they relate to Israel's Messiah, while the majority of Israel, who are the custodians of God's word, fail to understand. Israel in fact believes that the time for their long-awaited Messiah to be revealed, has come. They expect him to arrive within the next year, and that he will then allow Israel to rebuild the third temple. In Israel's current political environment, such a development would seem almost impossible. As religious Israel had rejected God's New Testament, which was also written exclusively by people of God's chosen nation, they only have half of the information that God intended for them. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. When either of these is missing, one cannot obtain a complete understanding of what God is revealing to us in his word. We know that God's word confirms the arrival of a Messiah that will be accepted by Israel, but this person will not be their true Messiah, and is known as the Antichrist. This is specifically prophesied in the following passage. John 5, verse 43. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not, if another shall come in his own name him you will receive. The first aspect that Yeshua then responds with, when asked about the end times, in each of these passages, specifically has to do with this person, known as the false Christ. Yeshua specifically mentions the deception that will accompany this person's appearance, and this is the first aspect, of the start of the end time, that is mentioned. When we consider how this would apply to the nation of Israel, Given the rest of the information around the timing of this event, this will be someone who will be accepted by Israel, as their Messiah, right at the onset of this period, known as Jacob's Trouble. This in my opinion, will also happen to fulfill God's word about this person and the role that he will play in God's plan for his chosen nation. We see in Daniel that the first thing that is mentioned about him, has to do with the confirmation of a seven-year contract, or treaty. This period of time, also matches the missing week of years, of the seventy weeks that were determined upon Israel, that still remains to be fulfilled. Sixty-nine weeks were fulfilled between the decree to restore and build Jerusalem, and Israel's Messiah presenting himself to his nation on the back of a donkey. The one week of years that remain, is then known as Jacob's trouble. This is what we read in Daniel, chapter 9. Daniel 9, verse 27. 
and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. It is important to keep in mind that the seven-year covenant, is made with many nations, at the beginning of this period of time. This event will also coincide with the Revelation 12 signs final alignment. We also need to consider a passage in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that provides essential details about the events, that will be associated with this person's introduction to the world. This is a rather lengthy passage, but it is essential in obtaining a full understanding of what God's word is telling us. This is what we read. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 1 to 12. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not, that, when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Some aspects that I have to highlight here, are the similarities that we see between this passage, and what Yeshua said in the Gospels. Paul refers to the deception, that will accompany the appearance of this person, several times in this passage. This agrees with what Yeshua said to his disciples, about the start of the end time, and the deception that will be associated with the appearance of the false Christ. We see that this deception is a judgment of God over the world, for not believing the truth, and this then also ties into the very first seal that is opened, as described in Revelation. We will consider this passage in more detail in the next video. So given this information, what can we learn from what God's word is telling us, about the months and weeks leading up to this false Christ being revealed? In the two passages of Matthew and Luke, we see that Yeshua mentions a number of characteristics, that are associated with the beginning of this period. He then explains, that when these occur, they will not form part of the end itself, but will be positioned on the timeline, just before the start of Jacob's trouble. He also associates these events with the period known as the beginning of sorrows. Knowing now, that this period is depicted by the celestial pregnancy in the heavens, God has given us understanding to know exactly when this time period will start when it will end, and what conditions to watch for in the world, when we enter into this time. The first aspect that is then mentioned in both passages, introducing the beginning of sorrows, is given as wars, and rumors of wars. This characteristic is separated from the other conditions, and is specifically singled out as happening before the time of the end. Yeshua then adds specific events and conditions, in both Matthew and Luke that will be associated with the time, leading up to the end. We see this as follows. Wars and rumors of wars, this starts the beginning of sorrows and intensifies until September 23, 2017. Luke mentions great earthquakes around the world, while both passages mention the famine and the pestilences that will occur during this time. Luke then mentions the fearful sights and great signs in the heavens. We know that the great signs in the heavens, are associated with the final two weeks, leading up to September 23, 
2017, when we understand what the sealed up prophecy and vision, spoken of in Daniel revealed to us. This is referencing the planetary collision, between Jupiter and Nibiru, that is scheduled to occur as soon as Jupiter is born from the Virgo constellation. When we now look at what is written in Daniel 9, verse 27, this tells us that this false Christ will put an end to the war, and bring relief to Israel that will be in a desperate situation of experiencing increasing sorrows. The war will be ended, and a covenant will be established between the Antichrist and the world. At this point, the nations of the world will find themselves in the middle of the Third World War. Israel will also be heavily involved, or at least affected by the war, as this time period is specifically prophesied over them, as a nation. All of this will in my opinion, lead into the great deception that will be poured out over the world, when the war will be abruptly ended by the false Christ, on September 23, 2017. The fact that this person will be able to enforce the covenant with the nations, at the beginning of the week, shows us that he will not use diplomacy, to convince the leaders of the world, to lay down their weapons. His appearance will be sudden, and he will immediately be in a position, to deceive the world. It also confirms what is said about the power, signs and lying wonders, that will accompany, his appearance. I believe the only way in which a person would be able to convince the entire world, that they should submit to him, right after his presence is made known, would be to have supernatural powers and abilities. How else would it be possible for this person to establish a covenant with the world, as soon as he is revealed, and his presence made known to the nations? I believe that Israel will welcome the arrival of this person. He will bring them much needed relief in their desperate situation of sorrows, and this will convince them, and at the same time deceive them, into believing that the person before them, is their long-awaited Messiah. There is however another aspect about his appearance that we have to keep in mind. This is also found in 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2. We see Paul saying, that this person will only be revealed, once a withholding force is removed. According to God's word, the false Christ is prevented from stepping forward, until a certain condition is met. We will study this in depth in the next video, as this is a lengthy subject to cover and has caused much debate and arguments in the body of believers. So in summary, what can we expect to happen in the months leading up to the fulfillment of the Revelation 12 sign? Based on my understanding of God's word, and considering the information in the passages that we have discussed today, I believe that the Revelation 12 sign marks the start of Jacob's trouble, a seven-year period, that is twice referenced in the book of Daniel. This is the one week of years that still remains to be fulfilled. I believe that the Revelation 12 sign, also marks the end of the church age, and the introduction of the Antichrist to the world. It will also mark the beginning of God's judgment of great deception that will be poured out over those who did not believe the truth. The Antichrist's revelation and the events surrounding his revelation will form part of the strong delusion that is written of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I will focus on this subject in more detail in the next video and demonstrate how I believe, this forms part of God's plan for Israel. At the time that the Antichrist is revealed, I believe the world will be engulfed in the Third World War, with many nations taking part in this conflict. Israel will be caught in the middle of this conflict, and they will be desperate for their Messiah to save them, out of it. They will be so desperate that they will accept a Messiah that comes to them in his own name, and not in the name of our Heavenly Father. I believe the Antichrist will abruptly end this war, when he steps onto the scene, accompanied by great signs and lying wonders, to introduce himself to the world, and to bring relief to Israel. This will put an end to Israel's sorrows, that will intensify in the months leading up to this event, as prophesied over them in Genesis 3 verse 16, and Revelation 12. This period, known as the beginning of sorrows, that precedes the beginning of Jacob's trouble, I believe was specifically planned by God to prepare Israel for accepting the false messiah, and it will start with World War III breaking out, 
on or around November 20, 2016, and intensifying over the 10 months leading up to the Antichrist stepping forward. I believe that after the Antichrist is revealed, the Third World War will be exchanged for another kind of war, during the 3.5 years that follow. During this time, 25% of the Earth's remaining population, will be put to death by the Antichrist, through his war against those who refuse to accept his mark, and to bow to his authority. Exactly what it is, that will trigger World War III to start in late November of 2016, I do not know, but we know that there are several points of extreme tension currently between various powerful nations that could spark a nuclear armament exchange. As we move closer to this time, I believe this will become evident. Accompanying this war will be massive earthquakes, occurring in various locations around the world. I will expect these to be of magnitude 7 and higher. The frequency at which these will occur, will also increase as the time for Jupiter's birth from Virgo, approaches. We have already seen the frequency of magnitude 5 and higher earthquakes increasing in the months between July and September, when this video was released. There will also be food shortages and an increase in disease around the world. The Zika virus may play an important role in this, as it would seem to be a genetically engineered virus, that is set to cause havoc around the world, and to target specifically the unborn, pointing once again to the dragon, that wants to devour the child as soon as it is born. With only two weeks to go until the end of this war, or between the dates of September 9th, and September 23rd, 2017 we could then witness the collision in the heavens between Jupiter and the unknown celestial body known as Nibiru. This will cause distress and perplexity among those who do not believe God's word, and who believe that everything around us came about as a result of chance. Considering the vastness of our solar system, how is it possible that two planets could collide? For those who know that God is in control, and has planned these events from the foundation of the heaven and the earth, as described in Genesis 1, it will be confirmation of the reliability and truthfulness of God's word to us, and the awesome blessed hope that await those who witness these events with gladness in their hearts. In the next video we will look specifically at the events that I believe will occur on September 23rd. 2017 and what God's word tell us about the Feast of Trumpets. How will the events that play out in the day or two, leading up to the 23rd of September, assist the Antichrist in convincing the world of his identity, and to bring Israel the much needed relief, that they will desperately desire at this point? How will it be possible for him, to be unknown on one day, and to have the world at his feet on the very next day? and to obtain the authority for establishing a peace covenant with the world, bringing an end to an intensifying world war. This is all coming in the next video, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching the third installment in this series of God's Roadmap to the End. If you are interested in more information about this, and if you do not want to wait until the next video is made available, please download a free copy of God's Roadmap to the End ebook, which is linked in the section below. You will find a lot more detail in it, that I believe will unlock many mysteries contained in God's Word. If this video is playing in a YouTube channel other than God's Roadmap to the Ends, please search YouTube for the name shown in the banner below, all the links that are referred to in this video will be found there. I believe this information was preserved for those who love our Lord Yeshua, and who are looking forward with all their heart, to meeting him in the clouds. I also believe that God is allowing us to discover his plans for the world in the coming months and we will provide more information on this in the next video. Please share this information with as many people as possible. It may be controversial, but I believe time will prove that God's word is true and reliable. Please also consider subscribing and liking the video, and check back soon for the next episode in this series. Until next time. God bless.